Today I will discuss symmetry multiplication table for chloroform molecule. It is a tetrahedral molecule like this. The CH bond acts as a threefold rotation axis, C3. Along each CCL bond and the CH bond, there is a plane of symmetry. Uh, for example, this is one plane of symmetry, this is the second and this one is the third. They are all vertical planes, they, all of them contain this CH bond as a common, common line. The atom labels for chlorine are 1, 2 and 3 as shown here and the vertical planes are designated as sigma V1, sigma V2 and sigma V3. This is a simplified diagram. Uh, these 1, 2 and 3 indicate the positions of the chlorine atoms which are situated at the vertices of an equilateral triangle. The C3 axis is perpendicular to the plane of the triangle and passes through its center. These dotted lines indicate the positions of the vertical planes. Sigma V1 plane is this. It is a vertical plane like this, perpendicular to the plane of the triangle. Similarly, this is sigma V2 and this is sigma V3. I will now make a list of the possible symmetry operations and prepare the multiplication table. The possible symmetry operations are identity, then C3, C3 square, sigma V1, sigma V2 and sigma V3. These are written along uh, this line. The same operators are written along this column also, E, C, T, C and so on. Uh, and the multiplication table will be prepared by taking these as the first operation and these as the second operation. The first row of the table can be very easily written down because first E then E will give you E first C3, then E will give you C3. In this way, this, the first row of the table, sigma V1 is easy to write down because the second operation is identity. This will be sigma V3. Similarly, the first column can be immediately written down because first E, then C3 will give you C3. First E, then C3 will give you C3 squared and so on. So, these two lines, these two lines can be immediately written down. Let us now calculate C3 sigma V1. Let us now calculate C3 sigma V1. Uh, suppose this is our initial configuration 1, 2, 3. This is the sigma V1 plane. We first carry out, carry out C3. The resulting configuration will be a rotation. So 1 will come here, 2 comes here and 3 here. Then sigma V1. Then we carry out sigma V1. Where is sigma V1 now? It is not here. We know that atoms are displaced during a symmetry operation, but the elements of symmetry do not move. So sigma V1 is still this one. This is sigma V1 plane. Therefore, by sigma V1 operation, we will get 1 and 3 and 2 exchanged. 3 will remain here. This will be our final configuration. And what is the direct operation that brings this to this. We note that 2 is in its own place. 1 and 3 have exchanged places. Therefore, the single operation is sigma v 2. A reflection on this plane will give you this configuration from this one. So, we can write, we can write C3 first followed by sigma v 1 is sigma v 2. Then let us carry out 
sigma v1 sigma v2 let us try to find out this result sigma v1 from from this sigma v1 sigma v1 means this plane this will give this configuration one here three here two here sigma v1 by sigma v1 operation then if we carry out a sigma v2 operation sigma v2 operation sigma v2 is this plane this plane it is not displaced by any symmetry operation so this is sigma v2 therefore by sigma v2 we will get 3 here 2 here and 1 here and what is the direct operation that gives you this from this we note that this is a rotation one has turned by this angle two has turned by this angle from this you get this by a c3 square operation c3 square operation so not this actually we have carried out sigma v1 first and then sigma v2 so sigma v1 first then sigma v2 is c3 square so successive rotations on deflect on two, two different planes give a rotation and a rotation followed by a reflection gives another reflection this is our result we will write these results here c, c3 first then sigma v1 c3 first then sigma v1 is to be written here the result is sigma v2 we have just obtained this and sigma v1 first sigma v1 first followed by sigma v2 should be written here this result is c3 square these two results have been just found the others can be uh, can be guessed can be can some some of them can be definitely written down for example here c3 followed by c3 will give you c3 square c3 followed by c3 square will give you identity c3 square followed by c3 will give you identity c3 square and then c3 square means c3 four times that is equivalent to c3 one time because c3 three times will give you identity so this part is complete uh, we now come here uh, we now come here c3 followed by sigma v2 c3 followed by sigma v2 will be another reflection it will be either sigma v1 or sigma v2 if we write sigma v1 here then sigma v2 is to be written this is sigma v3 uh, sigma c3 followed by sigma v2 should give sigma v1 or sigma v3 we don't know yet whether it is sigma v e1 or 2 c3 square followed by sigma v1 should give sigma v this is a rotation therefore c3 square followed by sigma v1 should give should give a, uh, another reflection one and two have already been found in this row therefore this must be sigma v3 a rotation followed by a reflection should should be another reflection and this number should be three because one and two have already been found this is an application of rearrangement theorem no operator is repeated in any row or column therefore this must be sigma v3 sigma v1 followed by sigma v1 should be identity reflection on the same plane twice should be identity sigma v2 followed by sigma v2 will be identity sigma v3 followed by sigma v3 will be identity next come here sigma v1 followed by c3 first sigma v1 then c3 what will be the result sigma v1 sigma v1 is this then c3 then c3 what will be the result rotate it one comes here three goes there three goes there and two goes here sigma v3 followed by c3 and what is the single operation 
that gives this configuration, we note that 3 is in its own place. 3 is in its own place. Therefore, 3, three here and here. So, so this is this is actually a sigma v three operation. We can write we can write c three followed by sigma sigma v one followed by c three sigma v one followed by c three is sigma v three sigma c sigma v one followed by C3 is, is sigma v. It should be another reflection and we, got, we get it here as sigma v3. Therefore, C3, sigma v1, sigma v1 followed by C3 gives sigma v3. Now we apply the rearrangement theorem. Here we should have another reflection. C, sigma v1 followed by C3 square should be another reflection. And what is that? 1 and 3 have already been found, so this should be 2. Sigma v2 followed by C3 should be a reflection, sigma v. And what will be the number here? This must be, this must be, 2 has been already found, therefore this must be 3 or 1. If we, we cannot write 3 here because 3 is already present. So, so there, here we must have 1. Therefore this must be 3. 2, 1, 3 and here 3, 1 therefore this should be sigma v 2 2, 3 therefore this should be sigma v 1 and here we are left with only the rotations we have already in this uh, column we have got E C 3 therefore this should be the reflections are here E is here, C3 square, therefore this must be only C3. And what should be here now? Uh, we have got C3 followed by sigma V2. C3 followed by sigma V2. We can let us carry out C3 followed by sigma V2. Sigma V2. Uh, first C3. Then we get 1 here, 2 here, 3 here. Then sigma v, 3. Because we want to fill up this, uh, uh, this place. So c3 first, then sigma v, c3 first, then sigma v2. Sigma v2 is here, it is also here. Therefore sigma v, this will give... And what is this? One, two, one has come here. This is, uh, we find that 3 is in its own place. Therefore, this is sigma v 3. So, C3 followed by sigma v 2 is sigma v 3. C3 followed by sigma v 2 is sigma v 3. So, by rearrangement three theorem, we should have sigma v 1 here. 2, 3, 1. Here, 2, 3, 1. And here we have sigma v 3, 1, 2. This way we have completed this part and we are left with uh, only C3 and C3 square. C3 square is here, therefore we should have C3 here. And C3 here, therefore we should have C3 square here. And C3 square here, therefore it is C3. C3 here, therefore it is C3 square. In this way, we get the complete multiplication table for chloroform molecule. Ammonia molecule also has the same set of operations and, and the same multiplication table. I will discuss the utility of such tables in my next video. So, let me thank you for watching the video.